Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be with you again in this wonderful warm summer. And last night we had thunderstorms here, <laughs> and I love the rain. So uh, it's a nice way for us to be fed. As we begin our service, uh, let us be mindful that it's a sacred liturgy. Liturgy, despite our virtualness, we are in a sacred space. Let us each be mindful of the dignity that is ours and, our, and of the responsibilities we are making that we are look, about to do. And as we proceed, let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, without you, we are not able to please you. So look upon us, O oh God, as we reflect on your word and as we become like you in worship so we may glorify your name in this world. Amen. Amen. In the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty, Prince of Peace, troubles back. As we continue in worship, blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Let us Almighty pray. God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hid. Bends the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 <clears throat> be with you and also with you let us pray lord of all power and might the author and giver of all good things 
Graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness. And bring us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 The first reading is taken from Deuteronomy 4, verses 1 to 2 and 6 to 9. Go now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it. But keep the commandments of the Lord your God, with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him. And what other great nation has statues and ordinances as just as the entire law that I am setting before you today. But take care and watch yourselves closely so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life make them known to your children and your children's children. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Psalm appointed for today is Psalm 15. We will read it responsively. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Whoever leads a blameless life and does what is right who speaks the truth from his heart. There is no guile upon his tongue. He does no, does no evil to his friend. He does not heap contempt upon his neighbor. In his sight, the wicked is rejected. But he honors those who fear the Lord. He has sworn to do no wrong. And does not take back his word. He does not give his money in hope of gain nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be, shall overthrown. be overthrown. Glory be to Glory the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the, Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Second reading is from James 1. Verses 17 through 27. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadows due to change. In fulfillment of his purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for you, your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of sodiness and rate growth of wickedness and welcome with meekness the implanted word that the power to save your souls. But be doers of the world, word and not merely hearers who de deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like the, those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and go on and go away, immediately forget what they were like. Mm. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty and persevere, being not hearers who forget what doers who act, they will be blessed in their doings. 
If anything, they are religious and do not browse their tongue, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion is that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep one's, oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks to God. God. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He is the mighty King. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands. That is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe. The washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me teaching human precepts as doctrines. 
you abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, listen to me, all of you, and understand there's nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. The gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Almighty, let us pray. Almighty God uh, and Heavenly Father, as we, we come in to reflect at this time, may our hearts be open and be fertile ground to hear from your Holy Spirit, your word, your unchanging word, your the unmovable God. Help us to understand your message for us this day. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, this, this morning I actually gave a title for my message. <laughs> and I'm not wondering if it's redundant. Um, I, 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 I'd say the, my title is, Who Are You? Uh, sometimes, you know, you, you reflect on your life and you, you have moments in time that are milestones. And you kind of say, what, what have I become? And you, you kind of step back and try to reflect, am I indeed in where I'm supposed to be uh, as I consider all that I have done? Have I followed all the rules and eat all the food that I'm supposed to be eating? Um, I'm, I'm trying to link this with, with the bread from all those weeks of talking about food. But um, I don't think we can get away from what we, we are and what we become from what we consume. But there's within this passage this week where the gospel message is a, is a stronger, it, it's actually far stronger, I think. I love all of them anyway. Um, in trying to hone in on who you truly are so that you, we don't make mistakes when we are in the world to discern what God's will is. So I will start with the readings the Old Testament reading from Deuteronomy is, is quite apt because it, it sets the stage. It sets the stage for the unmovable God. And the unmovable God is an expression that came from Karl Barth. This God that is unchanging. And in, in, in giving the statutes to his people, he was already setting the stage to say, follow these commandments. He didn't say, follow the traditions of the elders. Because the elders do, do things that are not in keeping sometimes with the commandments. And in fact, Jesus already had, had um, called them to account when they were talking about divorce and so on. And how they undermine the very commandments with their traditions. So we, we, what this is doing is trying to say from those Old Testament times until now, what we are having right in, in all of this is this for us to understand that God is unchangeable. So who are we in this? We are the ones who are reading this at this time who are benefiting. And I really need to say that quite emphatically because when we read and the, the, the gospel messages, the reading narrative this morning, we may think that the Pharisees really are a set of what you call it, whitewashed tombs and so on, which they, Jesus rightly call them. But we also need to understand that they are in the context of leading in a theocratic society. It's a society run by their religious beliefs. So we, we need to understand context. We also need to understand that much of what was taught and, and the explanation given were codified in what they call the Midrash and so on. So what we are understanding is we, these people took their things very seriously. So the Pharisees weren't too different from Jesus. And um, 
I, I wish we could have a discussion, but when that time comes, we, we can be in, in present with each other for that. So what many times we bash the Pharisees, which that's quite fine. We need to, we need to reflect at times, are we truly understanding what is in the mirror? As James said, we, we get so caught up that we look in the mirror and as we move from the mirror, we don't even know what we look like. So we need to know who we are. And Jesus is putting it squarely. It's not about washing your hands. He said the true person is the one who, out of the fullness of their heart, they reflect who God is. So it, 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 what Jesus is separating is the digestive process and so on, which yes, indeed, one would never expect one to, 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 to consume certain things and it don't defile the body itself and make even kill you. Indeed, with, with COVID, we, my household now, we, are, we go back to some of the practices that my, my family used to do. Uh, when you come in from a market, you wash everything. Uh, well, we wash everything, what we can wash, and we wipe down the, the containers of things that we get, especially the canned goods and so on, um, because we are in COVID. So we practice healthy practices, sure, that's okay. But Jesus is moving beyond that. He's trying to put us in a place that indeed we need to understand how serious this thing is about being a follower of, of Christ. So he is now encountering in a, in a most profound way, the rejection of the, 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 the Pharisees. Because you notice the reading started with the Pharisees and some of the law teachers um, they, from Jerusalem, they came to investigate. They, they, they wanted to find some, something under the rock about Jesus so that they could in fact um, call him out and, 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 and discount him and discredit him because he kept getting popular, more and more popular. But Jesus then almost verbatim quoted from Isaiah 29, verse 13, about how the people are honoring God with their, with, their, with, their, with their lips, but their hearts are truly not with God. And with that, of course, I don't think they were happy with that, which is clear. And he went further. He went further to try to help them to understand Truly, that's not the way to do these things. So the ritual of washing hands and regulations, which was observed and, and so on, is quite fine. But he's trying to highlight the extent to which their intention before they got there is to find something under the rock so that they could in fact find a way to, to, to discredit Jesus. So when they are calling, calling out about the disciples not washing their hands, you have to understand Jesus is knowing all their intentions and he's bringing that to fore and is helping them to understand and the people, of course, that indeed, please don't get confused and become so religious. The religiosity becomes the God. No, that's not it. And he tries to explain to us that it's, it's not about consuming things and washing hands and these rituals. It's about our hearts. So who are we? It's about our hearts. It's about my heart. Uh, recently, I had a wonderful experience. <laughs> it hasn't ended, but it made me pause a little. Initially, um, I, I realized that the righteousness of God is not achieved through, through my anger. <laughs> no, on the contrary, um, we achieve God's purpose through prayer. And hence it took, I, I, in my own experience, stepped back and said, let me pray about this. And I kept asking God, what should I do? And of course, God is providing the guidance. And we just, we are servants of God. So indeed, we are understanding that who are we? Our hearts must be with God. We must ask him. We must defer to him. We must understand his word. We must know when the, the false teachers come and say some, um, I was trying to find a more academic word apart from garbage. 
when they, the false teachers come with the garbage, we can run them and we can call the garbage truck. Because what they're doing, they're destroying. What the Pharisees were doing, they were destroying the religion. The same religion, they, they, they themselves were prepared to give their life and to kill others to protect. They're, in their thoughts, they felt like they were fulfilling it. And I, 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 and I invite you, if you read like the Deuteronomy and you, you go through, Leviticus is actually a beautiful book. It might be boring at times, but you begin to realize God cared for the people. But, but, but that's a distraction. Let's come back to the thing. So in this reading as well is also a recognition that Jesus is being rejected. That's the second thing that is highlighted. So yes, indeed, we live lives that we are going to be rejected. Yes, we, we say we believe in Jesus Christ. So what do you expect? Do you expect a, 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 um, a rosy journey? Uh, I'm laughing, sort of, but okay. Um, I, I, when you recognize, and we, many of you in your wisdom have recognized how God works. It's not that he's going to constantly take a stick and hit you over your head and bludgeon you until you're completely dead. No, we have experiences that it's like, like oh, we, use, we tend to use this uh, metaphor quite a bit. It's the, the olive, where we crush the olive, when we crush it, and as we crush it, we get the best oil. The, um, and as we, we get that oil, that oil is used to anoint, anoint people and they walk again. I, I walk with my oil stock. Um, I constantly have this in my pocket. And um, um, just remind me one day to talk about some of the miracles I have experienced with that. Just going to visit people, even though I'm not um, wearing my collar or anything, and just using um, something happened and I said, let us pray about it and I anoint persons. Who are we? Well, I'm a child of God. Um, I'm called by God. I didn't call myself. So um, just as you, God called you out as the people of God so we can gather to understand that what we imbibe, what we consume, what we take in into our hearts must be the word of God so we can reflect truly who Jesus Christ is. So the, the, the reading this morning without going on too long is highlighting about three critical things. Lives must follow where your lips lead. Uh, I have a, actually a sermon on that about congruency. When you counsel, you begin to realize how much people are not, they, what they say and what they do are not matching up. They, and, and it impacts them in a huge way. So, uh, uh, so you can throw in the word congruency. In other words, we must match what we say and do. And you're, you remember the scripture talks about yea and nay. When, when I'm saying, I'm, if um, I, I, what came into my head was, was a, an example from, my, my father was a policeman, by the way. So let me, let me give you his example. When he says he's going to shoot somebody, he does ask again whether or not um, your opinion, if you should shoot them, he's going to shoot them. Just get that straight. I should have been a soldier, but God clearly didn't want me to be that. Um, because when, if I decide to shoot you as a soldier, I'm a commanding a team. I'm going to shoot you. I'm, by the way, I'm not talking about writing a pen and write shoot. So I'm just trying to highlight to you our words, our yea is yea and our nay is nay. So in the world, we do that, right? What is it about being Christians and saying what we say I believe in Christ and whatever you think you are, God is in charge. I'm my God who I submit to. When he says yea, he means yea. When he says nay, he means nay. So we live with that and we embrace that. Which is why for me, uh, it's ironic. I, I love firearms, by the way. I'm sorry I touched on this a little, but I do. Even in seminary, I was part of the range using firearms. <laughs> so when I met this one of the youngsters, he's, he was doing medicine and thing, and then we all started chatting because of how we were scoring and thing. <laughs> and he said, "So what are you doing at UFT?" I said, I'm, "I'm in seminary. You should see his face." 
<laughs> a priest in a, in, in a firing range. <laughs> um, but, but I think I was there for him. He said he was a socialist and all these other things. I saw. And I, two of us, we had a good friendship. This is why I do. God bless him. Um, I said, socialism is not it here. So socialism is not it. I used to be in it. I used to be in it, really in it. And um, I shared some things with him about it. And um, I, as a result of that, I, I think he went on to reconsider. I don't know if he has completely come out of it yet because we have not been in touch anymore. So, so yes, I, I guess the Lord wanted me to say that from the standpoint that who am I? I am a child of God. I've been transformed and I have allowed that transformation to take place. So then number two, I have embraced the theology that God has put forward. God created the heavens and the earth and God is in me, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So I don't, I don't, Yes, I, I use all the tools, yes. Anthropology is there, but anthropology is in theology. It, let me repeat that again. Anthropology is there. It is a tool. I, I study a whole lot of things, but anthropology is not theology. It's not the gospel. And I, I, that's for another discussion, but that's a heavy point. But I think I needed to say that because Jesus contended with something like that from the standpoint that they created some of these measures. And number three that comes that is critical from this passage is the source of uncleanness, which I've highlighted in several of the points I have made. So then when we summarize all of this, we realize this rejected Jesus comes and try to say to us, embrace who you are in me. So who are you? I am in Christ. I face daily some, sometimes some things come and they happen. Um, and you, you <laughs> I had a cousin, I have to share this one. I had a cousin that she came and she decided to come spend some time when I was serving at a particular church. And she was flabbergasted at what it is like for a priest. In the morning, you, uh, in the afternoon, I had um, a wedding rehearsal and then not too long after, I had to go to the hospital to look after one of this gentleman who I love very well. He couldn't speak very much, but yet I knew what he was thinking. I, we always spend time together. <laughs> You're wondering how we spend time together. We spend time together. His spirit was just strong. Tom, Tom, oh, awesome fellow. And then she, so she said, but I couldn't say anything at the wedding, of course, my, we, because I'm celebrating new life, new a marriage. And when I say new life, they are going to die to each other. After, uh, um, so all who are married, I, I, I commend you that you have died to each other and become one in Christ. Oh, well, one together. Uh, I'm laughing because in other words, we have given up and we have decided to become like what Christ said we are. We join together and we become one. So who are we? I'm a child of God. And I'm focused and intended for the word of God. He has called me from things that sometimes I sit down and my children have looked at me and reminded me of some things in the past. Thank God for beautiful children. And we recognize in the word of God that Christ is speaking to us. And as he speaks with, to us, we get the word clearly. But I like what from James, I'm sorry, I have to emphasize this one from James. That the verses from James are the praise of this unchanging, unmovable God. James sounds like a really torrid fellow. Eh? But yet James was a loving bishop, a loving person. He cared about the word of God and he would give everything for it. And he give everything for God, that is. And so when James speaks, I, I love it from the standpoint that he's, he speaks straight. There's, that's the church, by the way. It's a, it's, it's a composite of all these different personalities, savages and otherwise. Um, all of us. Um, yes, that was a pun on my name. 
uh, uh, anyway, and uh, so as we encounter this passage, I, I'm uh, inviting you, yes, indeed for COVID, we watch, we look about things and so on, but we also learn about what is going on around us so that uh, in fact, we can, we can inform our actions by what we are prepared for. So some of my friends wonder, how do I monitor some of the other information, anti-vaxxers, whatever, whatever. And yet I'm, I'm, I've gotten all my shots, I'm, I'm fine. But one thing I realized with Christ, he listens to everyone. And then he can make these statements in, in this gospel reading to correct the thinking of these Pharisees. I know it won't correct it. In fact, it has to be fulfilled. So we need to understand. And I'm encouraging you. Who are you? Re look on the readings. Look on, all these readings are connected. In, a huge, in fact, there's far more, but I'm, I'm managing myself as well. In that he's speaking to you. He's trying to encourage you. He's trying to enable you. And it's an exciting time for the church. I think that's my view. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just different. I'm, I'm a little weird. I, I, I served yesterday in a, in a um, charity basket brigade Canada, where, we, where I, I assist with getting some things and then we organize drivers to go to different homes. So we, we, you can call us a mobile a mobile food bank. And um, when I would go, sometimes you'd be amazed how God has people standing at the building like one fella and he helped me with four deliveries. And I'm saying to myself, Lord, look how I was about to treat this fellow. Thank God I, I, I stepped back a little and just kind of paused. And then he helped me with everything. And I wasn't trying to push him off. Our, our culture speaks to alienation, but this culture of the scriptures is community. It's both Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and living in him so that the true nature of our hearts can be revealed in Christ. Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith by reciting the Nicene Creed found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer or in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the, Father, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We'll continue to prayers of the people found on page 359 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your bulletin. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our family, families, friends, and, and, and neighbors. neighbors. And for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. 
for the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and William, our bishop. And for all other ministers, especially Canon Wynne and Father Raddatz. And, and Father Savage. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all good goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The kingdom of God is justice, peace, and joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore pursue the things that make for peace and build up a common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share our waves of peace. <laughs> I'm so glad Jesus lived me. I'm so glad Jesus lived me. I'm so glad Jesus lived me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lived me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Oh, Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Oh, Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Oh, when I was in sin. Jesus lifted me when I was in sin. Oh, Jesus lifted me oh, when I was in sin. Jesus lifted me, singing glory, hallelujah. Singing glory, hallelujah. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus Morning, church. Good morning. Uh, I know everyone was uh, looking for Maxine. However, uh, 
I will be uh, giving the announcements today. Uh, no physical church uh, for the first week in September. Canon Wynn, however, has asked that uh, starting the second week of September, we go back to physical church. So uh, we'll be on Zoom again next week. However, uh, Canon Wynn will be at church uh, the second week in September. 12th. Uh, which would be the 12th. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll continue with physical church until uh, further notice or until we have any change in the uh, COVID status. Uh, the hall will not be rented or utilized through at least through October. When attending church physically, you must follow the strict protocol guidelines by wearing masks in church and by social distancing. The pews are marked off, so please sit in designated pews. Temperatures will be checked and if you're feeling ill, please stay at home and attend services on Zoom because we will maintain the Zoom services along with the physical services. After service, the ushers will release you row by row, starting in the rear. So please stay in your seats until the usher releases you. Please do not congregate after the service. Thanks for your cooperation. There will be a short men's meeting immediately following service. Mm -hmm. I also want to take this opportunity to thank Reverend Savage for the wonderful sermon today and for helping us through this time. Mm -hmm. Our thanks go out to Reverend Radix also. Okay, church, the teaming of the announcements, all right, are in your bulletin. So please read the main topics is the naming of the series the TNT Jazz Explosion, and the beautification of our premises. Don't forget, we're still looking for a section. Please contact Marcus. The information is in the bulletin for any information that you need in reference to that. Mm -hmm. Today is actually the Feast of St. Bartholomew the Apostle. I also want to let the vestry know that uh, our meeting on the second Thursday of September, the 9th, at 7.30. Uh, Good News Gardens invites you to plant, pray, and proclaim. I'm not going to go through the importance of vaccination, because we all should know that by now. <laughs> and I'm not going to read the COVID-19 vaccine mandates by the Episcopal Church. You can also read the Bishop's Corner. And as you can see, uh, we'll be back to uh, Boscov's Friends, Helping Friends, uh, which would be the 25th anniversary, one day only, October the 20th. And normally, uh, Regina normally handles that. So I guess she'll be doing the same thing again this year. Again, any questions, you can call the church secretary with any information or any anything that you might need. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Emerson. Mm -hmm. uh, back to you, Reverend Savage. Celebrations. Yeah, if you have any special blessings. Somebody celebrating wedding anniversaries or well, let me say a prayer for wedding anniversaries because I spoke about it. Mine was yesterday. Oh, congratulations. Thank also, you. also <laughs> father, also birthdays. I know my wife is having a birthday coming up. 91. Mm -hmm. All right. So let us pray. O eternal Lord and God, create and preserve of all mankind, giver of all spiritual grace, the author of everlasting life, 
send your blessings upon these your servants celebrating birthdays, wedding anniversaries, and other important milestones in their lives. We give you thanks for your faithfulness toward your faithfulness toward them. And as they experience your affirming love, they will glorify your name. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And now we and now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. How can I say thanks for the things you have done for me? Oh, things. So undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude.
As we continue, it's our blessing for you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we celebrate and give thanks, Almighty God, and thank you. And ask that God, as we go from here, let, let your spirit not go leave us. As Moses asked, that we'll not leave here unless you go with us. Be with us in our comings and goings, our work, our homes, and our families. And all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. Oh, sorry. Before we leave each other, let, let me send you all off with a blessing. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Amen.